All right, everybody. So welcome to our monthly roundtable. We are very excited to have you all here and uh, very uh, excited to get into today's topic. Uh, Winter, can you page forward for us just uh, real quick? So this will this will introduce uh, all of us. We are. Um, uh, I'll let everybody say hello as I introduce them. We have today uh, a new participant, Winter Rasmussen Ho, who is our marketing, uh, a wonderful marketing person. Say hi, Winter. Hello, hello. <laughs> and we have Andrea Dooling, our expert faculty member and regular participant on this. Some of you may have met uh, Andrea before. Doing well, Andrea? Yes, sir, I am. We are so excited to have you. And uh, my sister, Lori Glockner, also joining us. And it's so wonderful to see Lori with her hair done and her makeup on and a big smile because usually she is busy painting and mowing. mowing and repairing and doing all kinds of interesting stuff on the property she lives in. So uh, you doing well today, too? Yeah. OK, great. So loving air conditioning. Air conditioning is good, especially on a May, late May day where you live in Southern Texas, right? So, and where I live in Phoenix, uh, air, air conditioning is essential. So, um, Winter, can we page forward? So uh, today, uh, today's topic is addressing fraud and identity ver verification. Uh, and just a reminder to everybody, Notary to Pro does this monthly roundtable series. We do it every month and we try to focus just 30 minutes on some information that's highly impactful for you, helps you either grow your business, expand your skills as a notary, or just make life and work a little bit better. So today we're talking about fraud and identity, identity verification things very essential for all of us in the notary world, right? So thank you for joining us. And I'm sorry that the chat is not enabled today, but please drop any questions that you might have into the Q&A. We will be monitoring it and we will try to answer the questions as we go along. So with, uh, with that, let's just jump in. Okay, so pretty key, you know? to being a notary, wouldn't you guys say? Uh, identifying, being able to identify uh, people correctly, verifying their priority. Identity. Yeah, kind of job one is the, mm -hmm. who is it? Is it Ford that says job one? Or was it Chevy <laughs> or Dodge or Toyota? Who knows? It's somebody whoever you say. say. <laughs> it's job one. I don't know, maybe somebody listening can tell me what the branding is, but for notaries, kind of job one. Right. And I think sometimes we forget that because we're so caught up in, OK, we got to teach about these documents and this process and we're going to and we're going to uh, explain things this way. But at the end of the day, if we didn't verify someone's identity. Correctly, we kind of blew it. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <In> the beginning. <laughs> right from the beginning. Right. And yeah. Andrea, you yeah, go doing this work for a long time, a lot of experience. Have you ever gone to a signing and said, I, I can't do it, sorry, not, I can't verify who you are? Yes, I have. Um, and it, well, not a signing per se, but general notary work, yes. Yeah. And oftentimes when you are um, notarizing like power of attorneys and so forth, you're working with, people of an older generation and oftentimes their driver's license is expired mm -hmm. and if it's expired after i don't remember what the rule is now it's recently changed but if let's say for example if it's more than five years from being expired i can't use that id mm -hmm. um so in that case you really need credible witnesses and sometimes you don't have those handy and mm -hmm. when that happens, then you cannot conduct the closing or the signing or rather no. the notary work rather. Yeah. Well, thankfully, that hasn't happened on closings. Oh, yes. Um, that is and I think some of that is because there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes um, for the clients at the very beginning 
Yeah. Oftentimes they have to send so much stuff back and forth to yeah. um, the, the companies that they're working with that mm -hmm. I think that that kind of kind of mitigates that. It makes yeah. it so you have less of a chance of that happening. Mm -hmm. can, can I ask for either of you, when you schedule a signing and you're confirming that schedule with your signer, do you tell them, remind them that they need to have ID handy? Yes. Current ID. Current ID. Lori, why do you add that little caveat? Always, because yeah, I could have ID. It just expired 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And so I always add, you know, current uh yeah, ID that mm -hmm. I mean for people unexpired. General notary work like power of attorney and wills, things like that. If you're going into places where people are being taken care of, a senior home or a care home, those are people who haven't driven in years in most mm -hmm. cases. So they, they haven't renewed a driver's license. So I can understand how that would be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, awareness, and that's also core job, willingness and awareness to sign, right? And I, uh, I'll ask the same question of you guys. Any have you ever come across in? Let's ask this in two parts: loan signings and general notary. Any issues with willingness or awareness? Go ahead, Lori. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So both Lori and Andrea are clearly either unwilling to answer or unaware. No, no. Can not. you repeat the question, really? I, I was- In Lori's was, case, it's unaware. I'm going <laughs> to answer. There was somebody in the chat that said, I say valid ID. And I'm like, actually, yes, that's what I'm, that's the word I was searching for was valid and not current ID. And okay. that's the correct term for okay. the ID. So okay. what was your question? So, because I can't multitask. Okay. Now I I'll tell you what why don't we why don't we move forward and get into into the details of this because I think some of this will come up the other thing that is just a really key thing is to be in, uh, impartial or unbiased in this right mm -hmm. you cannot have a conflict of interest and we'll get into what that means in in a bit but these are pretty much the core things that we do and notaries are absolutely critical. I mean, I, I hope everybody on the call feels a kind of sacred responsibility in their job. Uh, you know, Carol Ray, our founder, and uh, my mom uh, really... Mine too. Yes, yours too, Lori, our mom. I didn't say our because I didn't want to make oh, Andrea sure. or Winter uncomfortable because she wasn't <laughs> their mom. Anyway, <laughs> so much for that. But she honestly felt that there was a sacred yeah. responsibility that as a notary, you're not just a notary. You are an absolutely critical part of the legal and financial process in this entire country. And so you need to be able to ha handle these things. So uh, do you guys feel that way? Yes. Um, and I do have a scenario in which I had to turn... I had to turn it down. Oh, so yeah? um, a guy had called me. He was in, let's say, Florida or somewhere. This was a few years ago. Uh -huh. And he needed me to go to his ex-wife's home to get some documents signed and notarized. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't remember if I, if I was supposed to confirm or if I had all the details. But anyway, I showed up to the home and I asked for... Mrs. Jones and someone else answered and it was the caregiver of Mrs. Mm. Jones. And I explained why I was there because she did look confused mm -hmm. and she led me to Mrs. Jones and I kind of immediately noticed something was a little off. Um, I explained why I was there to Mrs. Jones and so forth. And then the caregiver went on to tell me that about three months ago, um, Mrs. Jones had been on vacation and she fell from a balcony mm. and it was quite a few stories uh, high that she fell from and she had to have several operations done to her brain. Mm. And as the caregiver is telling me this, 
I'm also kind of looking at Mrs. Jones, looking at her mannerisms. And so when I start talking to Mrs. Jones, I can tell that they're, she's not aware of what's going on at all. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we talked in the very beginning of our conversation, I had to repeat to her later on. And mm -hmm. I just could not finish that um, that notary work. It was impossible to finish that with a, a good heart. And so yeah. when I was leaving, right before I left, she asked me again for the third time, well, why are you here? And I said, yeah, this, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And you don't know what you're asking her to sign. It might be to her benefit. It could also be to defraud her of everything she's ever owned, right? You don't exactly. know. And exactly. And so it's, it's critical. Even when you think you're doing right, you have to be impartial unbiased, make sure you're screening for that willingness and awareness. Really good story, Andrea. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it, have you ever encountered anybody who's too intoxicated to sign? No. Oh, Lori, yeah. yeah. Was that a good story or a bad story? It was good for them. It wasn't so good <laughs> for me. <laughs> they were having a great time, but... Um... Uh -huh. Uh, no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't continue because they, the, mm -hmm. somebody kept going into the kitchen every mm -hmm. couple minutes and I kept uh, smelling the alcohol in their breath oh. a little bit more and more. And then they started like really <laughs> becoming very loose and, um, okay. I, had to stop, I had to stop the signing. Yeah. If they're too intoxicated to sign, that's yeah. probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and and I've been to one where I've actually had to turn around and go back out because um, they had been um, smoking things. Oh, things. Things. And mm. I thought maybe they had a house full of skunks or something, but I, I'm still, I'm like, and then noticing their behavior, sitting down and talking with them because I wasn't really, um, mm -hmm. I didn't really quite understand mm -hmm. that. And, and after talking to them, I was like, yeah, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't continue and I had to leave. And keep oh. in mind, these are the worst case scenarios. Yes. Like this isn't an everyday occurrence. This isn't even a monthly occurrence, but yeah. when you have these sorts of things happen, it definitely sticks out in your mind. Yeah. So what do you do? You've got somebody who's too intoxicated to, to do a signing. What do we, what do we fall back on in explaining that to them? Respectfully, legally, I cannot continue with this closing or this um, notarization because you're, it appears as if you're intoxicated. When you become more aware of what is going on, by all means, give me a call or something like that. But I yeah. think my primary goal is just to get out. <laughs> yeah, get out safely and yeah. be nice, be professional, mm -hmm. but you can't, you can't, uh, you can't compromise your integrity. Have you ever been in a place where you felt threatened and, and, you know, cause that happened, that's happened not often, but it's happened to some notaries. They feel like they're being coerced into doing a signing. That's another, that's I, another, I felt we won't deal with that before. one unless anybody has any cool stories. Um, I felt unsafe before I drove out in the middle of the desert uh, at like 11 o'clock at night. And mm -hmm. because it was like a emergency kind of situation, and um, it was like this compound. I drove in, and they locked these big, huge iron gates behind me, and it was. And so I'm like immediately calling mom and dad, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, by the way, blah 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 blah, and I'm going uh -huh. in the house and I'm talking with them uh, yeah. on the phone and going, hey, my my parents are just around the corner. They you know we're they're going to call me during the signing and check up on me. And yeah, um, because they're, not... they're, you know, next thing you know, stuff. you're on a ship somewhere. I don't know. It, well, yeah, it was, it was because they were locking everything and there's nothing yeah. out there. Yeah. Like, really weird. I, I should have been in smart. and in out. That uh, was smart to say, Hey, my, my parents are around the corner. Mm hmm. Yeah, they were, you know, we, we ate late and then they're, you know, whatever. I yeah, know. was smart. Make sure somebody also knows where you are. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we page forward, Winter? Uh, can I touch base on the willingness and the, the 
Sure. Um, so we can do I've whatever gone... we want. It's our round table. Okay. So <laughs> the willingness and the awareness is that sometimes if you are unsure, I just keep talking with them mm -hmm. and asking them about like maybe daily events, yeah. um, uh, dates and, sure. you know, th things that they might have recently read and yeah. see where they're at. And also seeing the relationship um, and how they're interacting with the other people and that might be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And seeing if they're like, you, you know, their body language says a lot. And mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. And so once you, some people, especially when they're older, may be coming in and out. Mm -hmm. But when they're in, you know, they're, they're aware, they can be very clear mm -hmm. and then they may end up drifting off again. Yeah, um, I, I do think we get back into this in more detail, but I think that, that direct communication is important, right? You're communicating with them directly to make sure that they're mm -hmm. aware and, and alert yeah. and uh, uh, understanding of what it is they're signing. So yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Great points. All right, valid. What is acceptable and uh, a valid form of identification for notaries? What do you guys typically see? Oftentimes, driver's license. Um, yeah. That's driver's license and passport is number one. Yeah. Um, but the other thing with loan closing, sometimes it's asking for two forms of ID. And when mm -hmm. I call and confirm the appointment, sometimes I will say, make sure you have two forms of ID handy. Mm -hmm. And most of the time that um, that second form of ID could be their social security card or their um, medical insurance card, as long as it has their name on it. But that first form needs to have um, a picture of them, yeah. oftentimes a description of what they look like, their height, weight, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. yeah. And and spending time with the ID, really mm -hmm. looking at it, feeling it, you know, having a little conversation while you're checking everything out. Like, do they look five nine? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, really, she doesn't even come up to my shoulders. Like, I don't think she's five nine. You, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And feeling and feeling it. Mm -hmm. Have either of you come across military ID cards? Yes. Many times. Right. So these are, especially you, Andrea, in Maryland, I would imagine that's fairly frequent, right? Mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. are, those are legitimate forms of identification. If you have any question about what they look like, you can look online and, and get a description. Maryland allows those, right? It's a federal issue. Yes. How about a, another one that you'll see in Arizona a lot, which is a tribal identification card? Come oh. across one of those? I don't think so. Also, also federally issued. So le legit form of identification has a photo, has a signature and a description of the person. Okay. So very cool. Passports are like gold, right? Have mm -hmm. you, how about foreign issued identification? Is that legal in your state? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I, I wouldn't, I don't. I would think not for um, loan closings, but if I'm doing general notary work, I don't know. That's yeah. a good question. I don't. And I don't know the answer. I think it varies by state. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, I do know it varies by state. Some states allow it, some don't. And what they consider valid is usually a passport, though. Mm -hmm. there's, no way to, there's no way to validate a foreign driver's license. I wouldn't know what a driver's license from Nigeria looks like or from Bolivia, you know. So. True. And nor can I read the the language on it. Yeah. Very good point. Very, very good point. So yeah, I, I would check with your um uh with your um state rules. We all should always have the copy of our state rules. Let me give you a there's, scenario. What's that, Lori? There's also uh it's I would always keep the driver's license guide for right. all the different driver's licenses and IDs yeah. with me. Um, yeah, because sometimes I'll get a you know an out of state license and I'm not mm -hmm. sure the what it's supposed to look like. And mm -hmm. some of the and some of the IDs feel like they just 
printed it out in the back room, you know. Yeah. Um, and went to Kinko's or something and laminated it. But yeah. So it's really kind of hard to tell. In the old days, I had a driver's license that I borrowed from a friend of mine who was about a year older. This is before the cards were all laminated and integrated and everything. This was a paper driver's license. And I took a razor blade and very carefully cut his photograph out and took a razor blade to my California issued identification and slipped it in there so that I could sneak into bars. But that's a long time ago. I'm old enough <laughs> to go to a bar now. But the point is, you do have to check the ID. And sometimes a signature of a false passport is it's either too thick uh, or it's not printed on official page. So it could be very, it'll be very bulky and very thick because they've modified it. Uh, let me ask you a question. Let's suppose you guys go, our two experts here, Lori and Andrea, you go to a signing, you look at the driver's license, it's been expired for two weeks. And you're looking at the person and they don't look like the person here. The person on the driver's license is five, seven, and 250 pounds. And the person in front of you is about five, eight, five, nine, and about 150 pounds. And they look at you and they say, well, I don't look like myself because I've lost a lot of weight recently. What are you going to do? Mm. winter what do you do you've been you put you helped us put together this presentation what do you do say no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. uh if anybody listening in wants to put their response in q a we will we will list it but uh what how would you handle that guys so it's been expired for two weeks. So we already have a problem. So regardless, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to call the company, the, the signing company. Mm -hmm. But I personally, on the notary end, I need to see other forms of identification to prove it. Mm -hmm. If you are who you say you are, then I need um, you to give me other forms of identification to, pr to prove that you are who you say you are before mm -hmm. I can even contact the sign or about the fact that the yeah. ideas expired right same answer Lori. what about if it's a will mm. Mm. go ahead Lori. <laughs> if it's a will yeah well you, it still boils down to the id sure it, you know um if i'm if i uh really believe that this is not the same person their eyes don't look the same their nose doesn't look the same their mouth doesn't look the same. Their height doesn't match up because, mm -hmm. you know, we can put contacts in. We could do, mm -hmm. you know, alter how we look. And yeah. so you, you kind of just really have to go with mm -hmm. if you believe they are or not and yeah. get backup identification. Mm -hmm. But if it does, but for me, it boils down to if their driver's license it's not matching up and their signature's not the same, then um, I would be leaving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> yep. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, Winter, let's page four. We're actually running out of time. Um, red flags and warnings. I like these. Um, let me give you some scenarios because everybody can read these bullet points. Let's suppose you're doing a loan signing and the signer is flipping through all the pages, scratching their head and saying, what is this I'm signing? What what where, What is this document? I don't get it. What's this thing here? Like constantly throughout the signing. What do you do? Well, I'm going to try my best to explain what the documents are to the level that I'm able mm -hmm. to do so. But if they seem completely surprised by the documents that they're yeah. signing, then we need to call their loan officer, yeah. whomever they've been communicating with. It, yeah. There's there's different levels of confusion. Like, mm -hmm. are they just completely clueless as to what exactly is happening? Mm -hmm. Or are they asking about every single document? And why are they asking that? Are mm -hmm. they Do they seem more concerned or more confused? 
Mm -hmm. And, and so it's like, well, maybe some people are really nervous and don't trust the company that they, they're mm -hmm. working with. And so they, they feel like something's going to be put in the documents or removed that's, that um, they had agreed to, or, you know, had expected. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to dig into a little bit more of why they're asking and what, what they're questioning and yeah. by asking more questions. Mm -hmm. Like what, what exactly is concerning you on this document? What, um, you know, what information are you trying to find out? You know, yeah. and, and they're mm -hmm. like, well, I don't remember why I'm doing this or something. Yeah. What was the point of doing this? Yeah. Then, direct, direct yeah, so communication it's, it's with them about it. Mm -hmm. Asking a, a lot of questions and okay. getting to know them and not rushing. Hmm. Let me, let me give you one more scenario that to me would be a real red flag. You're in a you're in a signing for a, let's say it's a power of attorney, and you're with an elderly person, and the person introduced to you as their son or daughter is constantly standing behind them, whispering in their ear, <laughs> "Mom, just just sign here. Mom, just just sign this. Don't worry about it. Just just sign." You can all you can hear is the whispering. What do you do? <laughs> what is that a sign of to you? Um, I would that be asking be the person whispering in the ear if they could give us a minute. Oh if yeah. If I could just if I could just stop discuss this with their their mother or father or whoever's in front of them. Oh. Yeah, that definitely and gives I, the impression that the person is being forced into signing the documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Or either forced or coached, either one. It's not good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So Lori, you're you're gonna request to have a one on one with the yeah. person. Just if you And if they refuse, on. then uh which has happened before, yeah. um, then I like, you know, I, I can't continue this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't continue having this, you know, doing this proceeding with this in good mm -hmm. conscience. And yeah. uh I ended up like taking everything with me yeah okay so in the two or three minutes that we have left i think we're almost out of time we've focused on all the negative stuff like the worst <laughs> case scenarios right but what are the positive things you do to make sure that this part of your signing goes well let me put you on the spot with that we had an uh, one idea earlier about make sure you tell the person we need valid id before you show up, right? So it's not a problem there, mm -hmm. right? What else? Is there anything else that you can think of that you do? Um, I, well, when we I first them. walk in. No. <laughs> huh? I, I, I was telling Winter, I stumped you guys, but I- but <laughs> When we I, first I, I, walk you... <laughs> in, we're kind of setting the tone. Yeah. Um, and like Lori said, you you have this identification in front of you. You're holding on to it, but while you're doing all of this, you're kind of having conversation with the signers as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're like Lori said, you're flipping back and forth. You're creating a, a good atmosphere. Hopefully by the time mm -hmm. you've um, finished what you need to do with the IDs and notated it in your journal and so forth, mm -hmm. hopefully by that time, everyone is comfortable and it's a nice um comfortable setting however if you're mm -hmm. dealing with a situation where uh there's fraud involved then mm -hmm. you gotta figure out how to um deal mm -hmm. with that and also get out of the situation <laughs> yeah good points I, I think that's good advice for everybody anything to add to that Lori? no i mean it starts with if you're able to get a hold of them uh the mm -hmm. first contact with the, a phone call yeah. And setting setting the tone there and explaining mm -hmm. things and and um yes. and getting everybody prepared uh -huh. for, for when you come out and not having to rush around and you know yeah, especially for loan signings where you're gonna have a significant amount of time spent with them. Uh one of our uh per, one of the participants talked about during the confirmation call, he verifies that this is Trang Fredgren. Uh, said they like to verify that they've reviewed the package in advance. And so you're adding, 
yeah, we also remember we need your valid ID to, to do this. So that they, everybody's ex clear on the expectations. So yeah. wonderful, guys. That's great in the situations where you can review the packet. That mm -hmm. makes everything a whole lot smoother. When you can. Yeah, oftentimes it doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, because you're the one bringing the documents. Yes, but, you know, sometimes you're getting the documents at the very last minute. So yeah. I haven't really taken the time to look at the documents, and the signer hasn't really had the ability yeah. to look at the doctor's right. do documents. Yeah. Right. True. And you're both looking at them at the fir for the first time for the together. First time. Like, oh, look. <laughs> or the first yeah. time since they rolled off your printer and you organized them, right? Right. So, yeah, good. But I, I, the good points, though, I so appreciate it. Uh, audience, we'd love to hear from you about what you thought about today. Uh, Andrea, Lori, Winter, thank you for joining us and making this a very productive session. You're welcome. Uh, we have a very, very special roundtable. It's a surprise topic we have next next month. We do? So, yes. Yeah, it clearly it, is a surprise because the panelists don't know. Mm, yeah, this is a super surprise, but it's going to be amazing. So everybody spread the word. This is going to be a good one next month. All right. Uh, I, I promise you won't be disappointed. So okay. uh, thank you, Winter, and uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hello, I'm Michael Ray, CEO of notary to pro Thanks for joining us for this webinar. Be sure to see our website, notary for more information and resources. Also, don't forget to sign up with us there for great additional updates, news, and tools. notary to pro is the most respected professional signing agent course in the United States. Founded by Carol Ray in 2009, Notary to Pro has trained more than 10,000 notaries to become professional signing agents. Our graduates are preferred by more signing agencies because only Notary to Pro enables notaries to practice error-free signings. Thanks again, and see you next time.